go by your friend, you'll serve you. Uh, Are you going to go bring our new customers? He's new. 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 Another pink lady. Oh yeah, she's like oh, the and these little ones. Oh, and there's the third one, the trio. I like it. Oh, looking good, looking good. Okay, come on. Right. You want the mosquito smoke barbecue? with you all about my mom and dad and their years together. My fam family recognizes what a true blessing it is to be celebrating our parents' 60 years of marriage. So with that said, I hope to express as much as I'm able the enormity of the legacy of love and home, starting with each other, and explain how it has been passed down to their children and grandchildren. I'll start by um, sharing with you all a little bit about mom and dad's beginning and how they met. Please be sure to take in all the pictures my brother Bob and his wife put together as I'm sharing their story. Richard Baratier Pond was born September 26, 1930 in Rodman, New York. In 1947, when dad was 16 years old, he sold, the family sold the family's 365 acre farm and they moved to Mexico, New York. Dad attended Mexico Academy Central High School where he majored in agriculture because he figured, he figured he'd be a farmer. I wonder, Dad, if you knew at the time that God had much bigger plans for your life. I'm gonna cry and I just started. <laughs> plans that would affect so many lives, all of us sitting in this room. Dad played football there as a ride-in 
on what he tells me is an unbeatable team. He graduated in 1948 and afterward worked at the Butterfly Farm for three years where, listen to this, he milked cows three times a day at 6 a.m., 2 p.m., and 10 p.m. And in between, he did field work. He joined the Marine Corps in July of 1953, and on December 24th, Christmas Eve, he arrived in Seoul, Korea, by way of the U.S. Guard Gordon, spending four to five weeks in the belly of the ship. He served in Korea until 1956, and then returned to Mexico, New York. Their dad worked with his brother, Louis, um, um, where he milked purebred Holsteins. Dad helped there for about five months until Uncle Louie was back on his feet after gallbladder surgery. After that, Dad moved to Tucson, December 12, 1956, with his sister Charlotte and her husband Al. On January 3, 1957, Dad started working for Tucson Rapid Transit, now Santran, for $1.38 an hour. And he worked to top pay, which uh, after a year's work, which was $1.43 an hour. Now I'll stop there talking about dad, and I'll tell you a little bit about mama. Evelyn Mary Foos was born September 12, 1939, in Los Angeles, California. When mama was only six months old, she became very ill with a heart murmur. She turned blue, so her parents took her to, rushed her to the hospital. Her parents prayed to St. Therese, the little flower, to intercede for their daughter's life and promised that if their prayers were answered, they would change her name to Teresa, her name ever since. Right, Mom? Mom, I wondered if your family at the time knew. I'm going to cry again. At the time, <laughs> that the blessing, the miracle that saved your life would bless generations to come. In 1942, Mom's parents decided to move back to Tucson, where their, her mother, Armida, was from. They lived on 44th Street and then 37th Street, but in the summer of 1949, her family moved to 213 West District, which is a family home where my mom and dad still live today for almost 70 years. <laughs> it's been 70 years in our, in our home. This home has been in our family for 70 years. Mom moved to Warren, Arizona, then to, that was a suburb of Bisbee when she was 11 and in the fifth grade. After that, she moved to Bakersfield, Arizona, and then Douglas, Arizona. But in January of her sixth grade year, which was 1951, Mom was happy to move back to her family home in Tucson. Mom attended Sound Point High School from 1953 through 1957. Now we're at the winter months of 1957, the part of the story when, where mom and dad meet. When I asked dad about meeting mom, his response was, I met your mom in my dreams. <laughs> he explained that when he was in Korea, he had a chance to meet Marilyn Monroe. He said after that experience, he was looking for a woman with the same measurements. <laughs> he told me that when he first laid eyes on my mama, walking down the street, that he said to himself, I found my Marilyn. Dad, I wondered if you, have, if you could have imagined when you first laid eyes on mom that you would be sitting with her 60 years later, and all of us. When I asked mom about meeting dad, she said that she was minding her own business, <laughs> taking the bus to school, but my dad, who is a bus driver, was a sweet talker and that because of this, he won her over, and she agreed to go out on a date with him. Mom remembers picking a beautiful deep red rose off a rose bush and taking it to Dad from time to time. Mom shared with me that they started writing letters to each other and make, uh, making, uh, writing letters to each other about making plans for their future, which they would pass to each other on the bus. It was in these letters that they first discussed their plan to elope. When dad asked mom out on their first date, mom was not allowed to date. And so she remembered telling her mom that she was going to the movies with her friend Gina. 
But instead, Dad was waiting on the corner of 6th and Ajo at Pat's Drive-In, where he had, they had hot dogs and hamburgers and went to a movie. Dad remembers going out for Rupert floats on Speedway in Columbus. After a few months of dating, Dad, with a white gold ring in hand, asked Mom to marry him, and she said yes. Mom, I wondered if you knew it, knew that when you said yes to that love between you and Dad, that you were saying yes to a love that would be passed down to your children and your grandchildren. On January 29, 1958, Mom and Dad eloped and were married at the Tucson City Court. Directly afterward, they were on their way to Phoenix and stopped at a restaurant in Chandler, Arizona to eat. It was at this restaurant where Dad nervously wrote down a speech on a napkin and called his new mother-in-law <laughs> to tell her that he had just married her daughter. It was during this phone conversation that she talked him into coming back to Tucson and marrying in the Catholic Church. On February 1st, 1958, Mom and Dad were married here at St. John's. Mom. <laughs> Mom and Dad moved into their first home on Hopi because rent was raised from $50 to a shocking $55. <laughs> so they had to move. In the spring of 59, they purchased the Dixie Cafe. My brothers are wearing the uniforms of the Dixie Cafe, actually, at the moment. Dad worked the books and Mom was a waitress and filled in where needed. It was a short adventure because on October 13, 1959, Debbie, where are you? Debbie was born. Where's Debbie? Oh, there she is. Mom and Dad sold the restaurant. In July 1960, traveled to New York for a belated honeymoon and shut off their new baby girl. Dad returned to the Tucson Rapid Transit that same year, and Mom made sandwiches for Marcy's Sandwich Shop. In 1962, a lot happened for our family. Mom worked at Kresge's department store at the Soda Fountain, and they moved to 213 West District, where they still live 56 years later. Mom and Dad, I wonder if you both knew at the time that your home at 213 West District is the first home address that your children and grandchildren would ever memorize and now associate with home, our first home. I don't know if you've been told that your grandchildren, because of the home you've built, want a white house with red, red clay tiles on their roofs. <laughs> and at this home, uh, and this home kept growing because 1962, my brother Dan was born. Bob followed in 1964. Where are you, Bob? Three. Joe, in 1969. You can wait. <laughs> and me, I, your favorite mom, dad, I was born in 71, and Carol, our baby in the family, where are you, Carol? Was born in 1972. While raising six children, dad worked at Suntran. Mom got her GED, studied Spanish, computers, and nutrition. I don't know how they did it. It's by God's grace that we are still, we are all sitting here together as a testament to the love and value of family and home that our parents instilled in us. Dad and Mom handed down the kind of love that holds a marriage and a family together through all kinds of seasons. It's a selfless, unconditional type of love that helps people forgive one another, to respect one another, and to serve one another day in and day out. It's a kind of love that woke Dad up every day to sit by a sick wife in a hospital for months at a time as she recovered from a fall and tell his daughter when she worried about him, Mary, that's what husbands do. Mom and dad have shown us an active service kind of love that cooks and cleans for six kids and takes us to Kennedy Park to swim or to the library to pass on mom's love of reading. It's a selfless love that provokes dad to drink cold cups of coffee while jumping up to service a cup of coffee or offer us a citrus drop soda <laughs> to give up his own food on his, the plate and offer it to us. Now this kind of love may seem ordinary, but this kind of love is more meaningful, the kind of love that is lasting, the kind of love that endures all things, loves when the world tells you you shouldn't, that it's over. It's not self-serving, the newness 
and excitement of new relationship fades. It turns into ordinary love, and it's this ordinary love that allows people to grow old together. Mom and Dad have always loved us with agape love, which is constant because it comes from God. It is not based on passing feeling. The love, they loved us and each other on, a day, on days when they didn't feel like loving. It's a kind of love that motivated Mom and Dad to give up their family car for a month or more, Dan, you can tell us. Um, because So Dan could, two months? Two months. So he could go on a road trip his senior year when his car broke down. It's all the tiny little things like mom getting up at 3.30 a.m. to make dad's lunch before work, or like dad making sure mom has her water bottle in the car before she gets in. That's when you add them all, that when you add them all up equals a lifetime of love. And when we come to 60 years of their life together, you see that there is no ending, but a legacy of love and home that has been passed down to us, their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren that will be passed on throughout several generations of lifetimes to come. It's, and I'm on the last page, <laughs> it's a kind of love that brings their family all together from across state lines, across oceans, to honor their parents. Now our feet may leave our first home, where our story began to return to our homes in Tucson, Arizona, in San Jose, California, in Clearwater, Florida, in Morpeth, Northumberland, England. But we promise you, Mom and Dad, that because of our awe and admiration and gratitude for building us this foundation of love, that we will continue to let it live on in each of our homes. It will be our own expression of that love and family, but homes where the same love resides that Mom sang us to sleep with that night and covered us up with blankets she crocheted for us. It's the same love that Dad gently kissed us on our foreheads with, rubbed our backs and told us we didn't have to go to sleep, just to stay, lay still for a while. <laughs> they created in each of us children a lifetime of memories. We promise you that the love that started at a bus stop in Tucson, Arizona, will live on through each of us always. We love you, Mama. We love you, Dad. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Now before I go, I think we need a blessing over the food. Has the food arrived? Yes. 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 Okay. Father, is Father Kirk and Father Frank Franklin, would you mind saying a blessing over the food for us, Father?
and the glory of children is their fathers. Mom and dad have a lot of grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and even a couple of great-great-grandchildren. And I have a message from one of their grandchildren they wanted, he wanted them to have today. Sorry, technology. Um, currently in Florence now, but um, happy 60th anniversary. Happy 60th anniversary of times with grandparents. Great grandparents. Great grandparents. Yeah. But yeah, everything's going well. Um, that was all the other exchange students, so we're off to Rome today. So, how you guys? Aww. Aww. So we have been very blessed, and all of the grandchildren have been blessed, and honored their grandparents also. Thank you for coming, and please feel free to take any of the centerpieces home that you would like, and take home some cake, because there's plenty of cake.